We're very thankful to have another opportunity to come here to Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, and we thank the church for allowing us this opportunity. Um, our uh, mind goes back to a time we uh, used to uh, try. That's all we do is try um, to have a, to preach on the radio up here in Lafayette uh, many years ago. And um, I'd had a busy week one week, and um, didn't have the opportunity to study as much as uh, forward as I'd like. Um, and I was trying to prepare, and I remember going out the door and heading down the steps uh, uh, to the vehicle. And the thought just ran through my mind, you've done this a thousand times. And, uh, and it's just 15 minutes. It's, that's how long the broadcast was. And that's what just ran through my mind. And I didn't mean for it to run through my mind, but it did. And I didn't dwell on it. And I got up there to the radio station that day. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, that was the longest 15 minutes there had ever been. Uh, I didn't have the Lord with me. Uh, because uh, I was leaning on myself in the times that I had tried. Um, and I wanted to stop. I, I remember standing in that booth and looking at it, and I thought, I'm just going to stop. And the Lord would not let me. It was uh, a, a lesson uh, to me uh, to never come and never stand anywhere, uh, thinking you can just lean on yourself and experience um, in times that you have before. Uh, we always need to learn, lean on the Lord. And I, I learned that lesson. Uh, I didn't mean to, uh, to do the wrong that I done or have that wrong thought. Uh, but as I come this way this morning, uh, I know it doesn't matter how many times there has been. I need him this time. And I do ask that you would always pray for me. Uh, we're going to take a reading lesson in the book of John, the gospel of John in the first chapter. We're going to start at the first verse of scripture, read a few verses in your hearing. Uh, some other verses as the Lord will guide us. Uh, John, uh, Gospel of John, <coughs> excuse me, chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, with my mistakes, I'm sure I made there in reading, that's the first five verses of Scripture of uh, John, the first chapter. And we find here, as it is referring here, it uh, mentions in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, we look, and even within this, we see in this chapter, it, it indicates and it lets us know who this word is. Word here is capitalized. It is not uh, uh, speaking of just a, uh, a word, uh, but it is re uh, revealing to us who it is speaking of. If you look down in uh, the uh, 14th verse of this first chapter, we find it says in the Word, again capital, uh, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So as I read the Scriptures here, and in this reading lesson, and in this first verse, if I want to correctly interpret it in the Scriptures being the interpreter, this word that it is speaking of here is none other than Jesus Christ. So here we find that it says that in the beginning was the word. It is meaning in the beginning was Jesus. And the word was with God. Jesus was with God. And the word was God. And Jesus was God. I find according to the teaching of the scriptures that the Godhead, that God is a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And we look here and we find that how they, well, the Lord would say that how that they were one. They were unified. They were in agreement. Uh, and we find that here that we see this, uh, that it goes all the way to back to the beginning. Not their beginning, uh, because God has no beginning. We find in the scriptures over here in the book of Revelation, Lord, thank you. 
Uh, Revelation 1, it says here in verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was not, and which is to come, and the Almighty. I want you to understand that there is no beginning to God. Uh, there was no creator of God. God always has been and always will be. Uh, there was, it, it's hard for my mind when I think of everything that I have or everything that I've known, it has a beginning and it has an ending. Uh, but with God, it is not so. So here when it says in the beginning, it is speaking of the beginning of the creation. Creation of what? Of this world and all the worlds. That's what the, uh, the scriptures uh, will bear out. We find here that it says all things were made by him, speaking of Jesus, and without him was not anything made that was made. So we find that here in the beginning of time, uh, that God, speaking of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, were all present at the beginning of the creation of this world and the whole universe and all the worlds. Many people might say, well, it doesn't say that it says he created the heaven and the earth. Well, let's just look at a scripture here uh, in Hebrews 11 and verse 3. Through faith, we understand. You know, there's a lot of money being spent. A lot of scientists, uh, a, a lot of theories, uh, a, a lot of time invested in how this world come to be. Uh, a, a lot of time is invested in looking out into space and exploring space and trying to find uh, the reason that this world come into being. Uh, but I understand through faith, which is what the word of God says it takes. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Through faith, we understand that the worlds, not just this world, but the other planets, the universe, the sun, everything that we can look out and see, it says the worlds were framed by the word of God and that the things which are seen were not made of the things that do appear. That this world is, it has been created in everything that we see. Uh, every planet, every star, every moon, all the things that we can look at uh, we want you to understand that they, the things that do appear, that they were not made out of those things. They, uh, in this world and growing up in, in school, they had the theory of the Big Bang Theory that there was some sort of uh, explosion uh, and, and that uh, uh, caused this chain reaction of all these elements and uh, all these atoms and all this stuff outside of science that I don't understand and quite honestly don't need to understand to understand that God created all things and I want you to know if they want to know the truth of the matter about what caused things to be they believe there was an energy source there uh, that began that I want to let them know save them a lot of more time and money the energy source that spoke all things into existence that had no other beginning was God and his mighty power. You want to go back to what started it? You got to go to the man that created it, the Godhead, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost of God that they spoke this into existence. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Uh, I had a school teacher. Uh, we weren't of the same faith. Uh, back in, I was in seventh and eighth grade, uh, and we would uh, uh, take tests upon the creation uh, in one of those grades. I don't remember which year it was. Uh, and he would have his Bible. I still remember that. They wouldn't allow that today, I'm sure. But he'd have his Bible as we were taking tests, and he'd have that out, reading it in the back of the class. 
but he would tell us before we would take the test that it had on there. Who, how was the earth created or something along those lines and he told us he would not count us wrong if we said God. I am so thankful that there was a time that I grew up in that teachers could talk about their faith in God, their belief in God creating the world. I respect Him for doing that because there was probably kids in my class that didn't get that teaching any other way that it was God that created all things. And here when it says God, going back there to that in John, it's not just speaking of God the Father, uh, but we know that God the Son was there according to the Holy Word of God. And it says, And the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So there we find that as it says God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit uh, was there all in unison in creating not only this world, but all the worlds. So we look here and find that God began to create all things. Uh, that God is the creator. Uh, that he began to separate. He called out, let there be light, and light was there. He began to separate the darkness from the light. The light he called day and the darkness he called night. He began to do things from morning, uh, from morning to evening. Uh, and he would call that a day. That's how our days come about. Uh, is because God set those things in order. <coughs> he began to uh, bring earth uh, uh, and ground about and separate uh, uh, the ground uh, from the waters. Uh, he is the one that put the fresh well springs for us to drink from. Uh, he is the one that created the salt in the sea uh, for the specific purpose of the animals that would dwell and live there. I have seen pictures. I only seen pictures because anybody that knows me knows I'm afraid of water. And I don't do cruises and I don't do all those things. That's fine if that's what you want to do. But I've seen pictures where two seas would meet and that how they wouldn't bleed one over to another having different colors. Who did that? God did. The creator of all things. He put the sun up there uh, in the sky, out there center of what we understand as they teach us of the universe that gives us light. He placed this planet of earth just far enough uh, from the sun that we, it's not too hot and not one too far, one planet too far that we get too cold. He had made all those things, put the stars in the sky. He made every animal uh, that there was, every creeping thing, every fowl of the air, every beast of the field, every fish, everything that dwells. God made those things and you want to know how I believe that because I can trust what God tells me. I believe in God's word. I'm going to tell you what. I get to thinking about a time and what they are trying to really do when they're trying to find or prove a theory. And that's all they've got is a theory. They all have proof. They've got theory. Uh, theory might mean it might be true and that might not be true. Let me assure you this right here is not a theory. It is the word of God and it will stand when the world is on fire. I want you to know today uh, that God created all things. And on that sixth day, I believe, he took man out of the dust of the ground. And he said, I'm going to make him in our image. I'm going to tell you what he breathed into him, the breath of uh, his nostrils, uh, the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The only thing that God made on this earth in his image was mankind. There's a lot of people in the world that believe 
that we have evolved to the state that we have. They've got theory. I've got and we have the word of God. And that's where my faith is, is in what God said. They will tell you over the millions of years uh, and all of the things of how this world and how man has evolved into the state that we're in. How that we come from monkeys and how that sometimes we come from even a lower species. Let me assure you today, that's not true. We were made in the image of of an almighty God, an eternal being, a perfect man outwardly and inwardly. That's how God made man. And he put him there in that garden uh, that he had made uh, so plentiful with all that it need. There was no bloodshed. There was no trauma. There was nothing anywhere of any kind. They ate from the herbs of the field and he put him there to dress it. He put him over all things. It's what he done. It's what the scriptures say. And I believe the word of God. That God done those things. That he created man. And that when he saw that man needed a helpmate for the animals he had made both male and female. So that they could multiply and they could replenish. Uh, and they could go on. Uh, and we find that there he caused a deep sleep uh, to come upon Adam. And when Adam had fell asleep, we want you to understand that God took a rib from him. And from him he made woman and brought her to the man and he called her the woman. I want to tell you today that God is the creator of all things and it is he that we should give the honor and glory to for it. Everything else, every other theory, every other prognostication, every other uh, uh, thought that man can come up with, every study that they can come up with, anything that they do, they try to disprove God. And they can't do it. At the end of it all, it is God that created everything. Everything. And you know what? God didn't need nobody to show him how to do it either. I have to have people show me how to do things. I'm, I'm not a smart man. I, I have no real talent whatsoever. I can't build nothing. I can't fix nothing. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very talented at all in any form or fashion as probably anybody that knows me knows that. But I'm going to tell you what. I have to have people show me how to do things. And I'll watch them. The older I get, I'll watch somebody that knows how to do something. I'll watch how they do it and I'll try to emulate that. I'll try to uh, uh, learn from them and do as they done because if they know how to do it, then I can learn from them. Well, God didn't have a teacher. God didn't have anybody that come along and said, here, watch me do this. God's always been. Ah, there was no beginning to God. And what we find the word of God to say in Isaiah 40 and 12, who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Made it out the heaven in a span and comprehended the dust of the, uh, of the earth in a measure. Weighed out the mountains in the scales and the hills in a balance. Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor and taught him? That is not a question of their trying to find the answer to. It's a rhetorical question, a rhetorical statement. It is letting us know that God is so big that he could put all the waters in his hand. He could measure them out, even the largest mountain, all the whole universe. It is nothing but in the palm of a mighty hand of God. And who taught him? Who directed him? Who said do this? Or who said do that? It is all done by the pleasure of God. We mind here in the scriptures. Uh, in Isaiah 45 in verse 18. There's a whole lot that we spend in our country. A whole lot of time and a whole lot of effort. And we're going into outer space. We're going to the moon. They're Putting, they say they've got machines on Mars. I, I assume that's where they are. I, I don't know. They all this and all the other countries. Everybody's racing. They say there's satellites all uh, in the atmosphere out there in space. And there are satellites looking down. Ain't no telling what all they see and know of us. But you know who sees all things? Who all seeing eye is? That's God. 
Well, they spent all this time, and they're like, hey, when we run out of our resources here, when we've dried this earth up and, and there's nothing else left, when there's a war that makes it so bad that we can't inhabit this earth anymore, maybe we can go and we can live somewhere else. We can get on a moon or get on, a, on another planet somewhere. I got, I got some news for you, and this will come from the Word of God. God didn't make any of them to be inhabited. Uh, we are looking for life outside this planet. We are hunting things. We are listening for things. They're sending out signals, hoping they get something back. Their own ignorance is tripping them. If they just study the Word of God and trust in what God says, they would save a whole lot of concern of this world. Let me assure you, the Word of God answers that question. Isaiah 45 and 18, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I'm going to tell you, he created this world in the shape, with the contents, with the necessities that it takes to live upon with the right amount of things. He didn't create the next one down the line. He didn't create the one in front of us. He created this world to be inhabited. Why? That's what God desired to do. That's, you know, people want to know the why. Why can't we just trust God with it? Why can't we just believe and be thankful for what God's done? And why question the creator of why he done it? That's a whole lot of people in this day and time. I guess that's just in our nature. I've worked on things and nobody else want to pitch in and help. Uh, seeing that something needed to be done, get done. And then they say, well, why didn't you do it like this? We'll jump on in and help then. I want you to understand there was nobody else to help God. There was only God and he created it for his pleasure. He's the one that knows all things. He's the one. He didn't need a counselor. I'm going to tell you what. Many I hear a lot of times. I've uh, seen ads that I could send off some money and I could name a star. I could pick one out by its coordinates and I could send them money and that uh, that. They would name it and that'd be my star. Well, it ain't my star. If I had done something so foolish as that, that's the Lord's. And you know what? They've already got names. According to the word of God in Psalms 147 and 4, he telleth the number of the stars and he calleth them all by their names. God knows everything. And you think about the magnificence of God, the strength of God, the power of God to create this world and all that we see out of nothing. There was a old kind of funny story, a, a, a little anecdote, I guess, one time that a scientist uh, uh, would, uh, the world's greatest scientist, uh, was going to challenge God and told God, I can make anything you can make. I can form anything that you can form out of the dust of ground just like you. I can make anything. I can reproduce anything that you can. What do you want to make? He said, I can make anything you want out of dirt. Just show me what you want. And the, as the little anecdote goes, said the Lord said, okay, go get your own dirt. Go and make your own dirt. Go and form that out of nothing. Go and take nothing and make something out of it. Man cannot do it. We can only take what we see and begin to manipulate it, begin to take it and put it into the forms of the things that we use. But God spoke this world into existence and all the things therein out of nothing. I mind in uh, Job 26 and verse 7, he stretches out the earth over an empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. You can come up with all the theories you want. He hung it out there on nothing. He bindeth up the waters in the, in the thick clouds, and the cloud uh, uh, is not rent under them. He holding back the face of his throne and spreadeth the cloud upon it. He compasseth the water with bounds until the day and night come, and the pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished. 
at his reproof. He divideth the sea with his power, and by his understanding he surmiteth the proud. I want you to see the Creator, God Almighty, stepped out and hung this world and all things on nothing. He divided it all. He created it all, spoke it all into existence. It says here, divides it by his power and his understanding. I want you to understand here today uh, that there is none other than God that doeth these things. There is none to look to. A lot of people in the world today, they like to put a label on things that's really God. Really what God does. I want you to know, according to the word of God, there is no mother nature. That's something man's come up with. They begin to talk about Mother Nature. And they begin to talk about its power and its uh, uh, magnificence. I'm going to tell you what, there's only God who created all things. And I want you to know who's got power over the universe, over the weather, over everything that we have. It's God Almighty. Nahum 1 and verse 3 said, and the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. And the clouds are as the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and made it dry and dried up all the rivers. Uh, Bashan languishes and caramel and the flower living language. Uh, the mountains quake in him and the hills melt and the earth is burned in his presence. Yea, the world and all things that dwell therein. What is that telling me? God has his power to send rain, to withhold rain, to be in the wind, to withhold the wind, to bring a hurricane, to bring a tornado. To bring a dryness, I want to tell you, God's got that power. We spent a lot of time and money. And I believe that we should take care of this earth. I, I believe uh, uh, there was a lady I used to rent from, uh, 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 Sister Dolores Powell. Uh, I ain't seen her in a long time, but I used to rent from this lady. And she was very particular. Uh, and, uh, and I mean that in a, in a, a very complimentary way. She was... I've known her just about all my life and, and her family. And I'm going to tell you what, she's a good woman. I mean, she comes from good stock and a good woman. And she, uh, uh, I was able to rent and live uh, uh, there at a place she had. And she had another place one time. She was telling me about it because uh, we would weed eat for part of our rent. And I'm glad that she allowed me to do that. Uh, and she allowed this individual that lived in this little home, this little uh, manufactured home up beside of her. And she kept everything neat. Kept everything. She wanted everything kept neat and wanted it clean. He wanted it uh, uh, kept right. And I, I respect that. Uh, and the man was fooling with a weed eater. And if you've ever fooled with a weed eater, guess what? You'll know uh, that they can make you mad about as much as anything. They won't crank or they quit and the line mess up. Hey, that'll frustrate you probably about as much as anything. So this man got all frustrated fooling with it. And he hauled off. And he kicked the skirt around this trailer there that he was living in. And he just got mad. He, he wasn't trying to be necessarily disrespectful, I'm sure. And she hollered at him. And I can just hear her. She told me this. She hollered at him. Said, what are you doing? And he began to apologize for kicking that uh, uh, trailer. He knew it was hers. He could have damaged it by what he'd done. He probably had a little rage to him like any of us might have done when you get that frustrated and you get throwing things down and kicking and acting uh, uh, crazy, I guess. And he said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to uh, cause any harm or whatever, how he put it, uh, uh, to your property. She said, let me tell you something. That ain't mine. That's the Lord's. That stuck out to me. Boy, I spent many years ago and that stuck out to me. She said, that ain't mine, that's the Lord's. You wouldn't walk, walk up to the Lord's throne and kick that, would you? No, ma'am, I would not, he said. Well, we're not going to kick these things, we're going to take care of them. That's why she had regard to what she had. Yes, I'm sure she liked uh, the, uh, the pretty nature of how it looked, but she respect the true owner of all that she had. I'm going to tell you what, when he put Adam in that garden to dress it and to keep it and to see to it, he wanted him to respect the owner of it and the earth and all the fullness thereof according to the word of God is the Lord's. 
Scriptures say he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. There is nothing anywhere that God don't own. You might say, I've paid for what I have. Tell you what, God still owns it. God still owns it. He owns this country, every bit of land. They might deed it to somebody, but may sure be assured, God owns all of it. It's all His, and we ought to respect it. We ought to treat it right. We ought not to trash it up. We ought to have respect to what God has done. Not worship it, but ought to have respect to it. I've never forgot that. I don't know if she, ever, she even knows that I do this, but if she does, I've tried to honor her because that is, I have never forgotten what she said, and it's always stuck out to me, um, and we ought to do that. And people begin to, to think, and we live in a time, and I realize that I might say storms are stronger now, and this and that. I, I don't know. Maybe God's madder at us uh, than what He's been. You ever think about that? Uh, that the reason that things, that there's droughts in some areas and, and floods in some and, and the winds are stronger and the storms are more fierce, would it even stand to reason that maybe it's because God's trying to get our attention, trying to use these things to shake us, that the earthquakes and the things that happen to let us know we need to reverence God? Has that even entered to the thought of man that maybe God is using these things that it ain't uh, 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 some theory of things getting hotter and things getting warmer. Let me tell you what, when I was just a teenage boy mowing out in a, with a push mower in the backyard for a lady, let me tell you what, in a hundred and something degree weather, it's hot out there. It's hot today when you get out working too. People think it's going to get, they almost make you believe uh, that we're going to get to a point that it's all that's going to be so hot, it's gonna uh, we're not going to have the ability to grow or anything. Well, let me see what the Word of God has to say about it. from the Creator of all things, Genesis eight and twenty two. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall day and night shall not cease. What's he saying? You're going to have all the seasons. You're going to have them all. Now, are some winters worse than others? Yeah. When I was a boy, it seemed like it snowed more. I don't know why it snowed more, but it did. Uh, maybe that's just in my thought. Uh, we also didn't have all the tools we have today to clean roads like we do today either. Uh, we stayed at home more. Maybe that's the reason I like that snow more. I got out of school more. But we have these theories, have all these things that people believe and are pushing and they go against the word of God to tell you that if we don't do this or we don't do that, that we won't be able to grow food. Let me tell you what the scriptures say here, that as long as this earth remains, there's going to be seed time and harvest. Their seasons will exist. Uh, that there is going to be cold and heat in summer and winter, that it's not going to cease. It's not going to go away just because man wants it to be that way or a theory of it being that way. Let me assure you, if we'll see the things and we will trust in God, God has already said it'll be that way. You know, God's placed uh, all these plants and everything and the things that are within the earth, the minerals and all the stuff that we need. Uh, God knew exactly how man would develop things and would come up with things and what they'd need. And uh, we sell uh, 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 in this country, and I'm sure they do others, we, we sell products and we sell a theory of, well, we've got to go to this. This will fix it all. I'm going to tell you what will fix it all. It's trusting in the Lord. That, that's, that's what will be. But I, I, I want to get on for just a, a few more moments of time. God's the creator. I hope that I have... <clears throat> Laid that out from the scriptures, and I know there's other preachers that uh, would have done a lot better job of this than what I've done, um, and bring out even more scripture. But I brought what the Lord has brought to my heart and my mind. But He's created this world. He's created the the sky, all the birds in it, the clouds, the sun, the moon, the stars, um, everything. He's created all these things, and I believe that. But I'm going to tell you what I also believe. God did not create all these for us to worship them. We find in the scriptures in Exodus in the 20th chapter, 
It says in verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, God does not have a form that we can look at and say this is him. The world's tried to put him into a form, but God, the scriptures say God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Uh, 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 how do you quantify God? How do you, how do you know what he looks like? Uh, the scriptures teach me according to the word of God that Moses was putting up in the cleft of the rock. And God walked by him and put his hand over his face and only let him see his back parts. Or his hind parts, ever how that is worded there. He couldn't see him face to face and live. No man's seen the face of God. No man can describe him. His beauty far outshines anything. His word only gives us descriptions that we can understand. But oh, what beauty there is in God. So when he says, thou shalt have no other gods before me, he knew the very nature of man. Because it takes faith. To trust in God and to believe in God and believe Him from their heart for the saving of your soul. It takes faith to trust in Him uh, for all the things that have been made. And He knew of what He had created and the beauty of it. He knew what man would do. And He warned him, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And what can be a God? It says here, And thou shalt not make any graven image. Or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. And thou shalt not bow thyself down to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth of generation that hate me. The Lord knew how man would be. He didn't make us be that way. He didn't force us to be that way. He didn't tempt us to be that way. There's many in the world say, well, God put it here. He's, try he's trying me with that. God does not tempt men with evil. Neither can he be. Let me tell you what. We better respect God Almighty is what we're, I'm seeing here in these scriptures. He said, don't make any graven image. Don't worship anything with your, uh, that you make with your hands in, in like figure to what we've seen. You know, a lot of people, they'll worship angels. I find according to the word of God, we shouldn't worship angels. That we should not bow ourselves down to them. Ah, there's a lot of people, angels, angels. And I'm thankful for the uh, protecting uh, angels of God. And I, I do believe in angels. I believe what the scriptures teach about angels. But they are not to be worshipped. They are not to be before us and mow down and pray to and wish for. We're to worship God. But we ain't supposed to worship the sun or the moon. We're not supposed to come up with uh, uh, idols of the sea. You look in the Old Testament, you'll find that they'd have half fish and half man. They would have half beast and half man. Uh, they would form these ideas up the sun gods and the fertility gods and all these things. Where did they come up with those ideas? Where did they come up with those visions of those things, of those thoughts of things to do from the what God had created, what he had warned them about? Romans 1 and 20 says, For the invisible things of him, speaking of who? Of God. From the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood, that by, uh, by the things that are made, even as his, his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. There's no excuse to not know there's a God. And I'm not talking about a higher power. People use that. that well, do you believe in a higher power? I believe in God. I, I, there ain't any other higher power. There's not some uh, a blanket statement that you can just say, well, there's a higher power. Yeah, I believe there's a higher power. That's God. <laughs> there is no other. Uh, there, there is no Buddha. There is no Muhammad. There is no this. There is no that. There is only God Almighty. They can create all the gods they want. They can follow all the men they want. But there is only God. It says here, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and foolish heart. Was, and their foolish heart was dark, and professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. There's many astrologers. There's astrology mentioned in the Bible. And they would go and they would try to figure out God. They couldn't do it. They ain't going to do it today, neither. They ain't going to do it today. Do I gaze up on a clear night? 
up at the stars and to see the beauty of it or at a beautiful sky, a beautiful sunrise or a sunset. Ah, oh, have I set my life on a beach and looked at the ocean uh, out there in Oregon and seeing the sunset and seeing the beauty of it? Have I done that? Yes. And you know what I think? Look what God has made. Look what God has done. Look at the beauty of the work, the craftsmanship, the artistry of an almighty creator. But many of the world, many of the world, many highly learned people, many more degrees than I'll ever have, studied more things, tried to prove more things. They've become fools because they've not given God the honor and glory of creating everything. They don't want to admit there's a God. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of an uncorruptible God into an image like to a corruptible man, to birds, to four-footed beasts, and to creeping things. Warn them about that. Wherefore God gave them up to their uncleanness, to the lust of their own hearts, to the dishonor of their bodies between themselves, who hath changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. I, I, I am a firm believer in respecting what God has made, not mistreating it, not taking advantage of it but caring for it, working for it. Uh, 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 I, I believe that. I believe that we should do that. I don't believe we should misuse anything that God has provided us. I believe He expects us individually and collectively to be wise stewards. But I'm going to tell you something. God didn't create man to worship this earth. The scripture there says He created this world to be inhabited by man. By mankind created in us in his image to live here and to worship and trust an almighty God. He's provided us things. He expects us to work. He expects us to labor according to the word of God. He expects us to be industrious. And he knew that man would be. And he created men with ability to come up with, uh, with understanding of things, to be able to improve and to help ourselves. But let me assure you, we're not to worship those things. We're not to go on our farm and look over it and look and say, look what I have. Look at this and, and treasure it more than God. No, sir, we should not do that. We should be thankful for the God that has put it all there for us to enjoy and to take uh, uh, enjoyment out of. Some people might own a half an acre. Might own a half an acre and have a small home, but let me assure you, thank God for it. Pete puts food on your table, thank God for it. The roof over your head, thank God for it. The clothes on your back, thank God for it. The health in your bodies, you know what the scriptures tell us? Uh, I believe it is over here in the book of Acts. Just thought of this. I believe it's Acts. I can turn over there too. It Acts, yeah, Acts 17 and verse 28, for in him... We live and move and have our being. Let me assure you, every breath we get comes from God, the creator of all things. But man has got so turned around and so twisted around that we worship the creature more than the creator. I'm going to tell you what, we better give ear to the word of God. God is in control of all things. He can make the land to flourish. He can make her to dry up. It's all in the hand of God. I'm going to tell you what, if I was a farmer, I'd be a praying man. If I was a farmer, I'd be a God-fearing man. If I was a farmer, why? Who brings those crops up out of the ground? God does. Who has made it so that things can grow from the earth? 
God has. I'm going to tell you what, you want to know who ought to be God-fearing people? We should be. Uh, we should pray that God would bless uh, our land, that God would keep providing for it the things that it needs, that food could grow, that we could sustain ourselves, because I can assure you, if God withdraws His mercy from this nation, from our land, we'll starve. We'll starve. We'll become like the other lands we see where the gospel has been and they have not believed. We'll become a chapped land. A land that does not grow with plenty. I'm going to tell you what we better in this country. Stop worshiping the government. Stop worshiping the scientists. Stop worshiping the sun of the sky and this and that. We better fall down and worship God. The creator of all things and in who all things come from. This is our ever. I don't know if it's made any sense, but God's been laying this on my heart for a couple weeks. Uh, and I had to cry to come and try. Uh, I, I, I know God's got a reason for it. And I know that it's just the truth. If there ain't another reason, it's the truth. And it deserves to be preached. This is our effort. Thank you for listening. And may God bless you.